Welcome YouTube friends and family to today's edition of the Wellness Homesteader. I first want to start by saying thank you all for your kind messages. I think I've been kind of a hot mess <laughs> these past few months. Um, I did have to have a dental um, procedure done that ended up being a little bit complicated and I had to hold my mouth open for two hours and then my face swelled all up. <laughs> so today is actually Friday. Um, I think I'm going to be filming over the next couple days and you'll probably be seeing this on Tuesday. I'm trying to give myself a little grace and a little time to heal. And that was just one of the couple of problems I'm going to have to have attended to. But anyway, thank you all for thinking of me. I appreciate it. So I want to share this recipe with you. I found this recipe. I need to put a parental block on Pinterest. <laughs> Actually, I saw a picture of it on Pinterest and I'm like, that looks amazing. And it was honey garlic chicken. So I made it. I didn't measure anything. I left out a couple ingredients I, I didn't agree with. So I've kind of come up with Kim's own recipe. And let me tell you what, y'all, this is a crock pot recipe. It's great if you um, have a busy day or you wanna set it and forget it and not have to stand over the stove cooking. Um, so let's make some honey garlic chicken with a little bit of an Asian flair. So to start with, I did wanna share this. I love this brand of the uh, reusable bags because some of them are really hard to get them to seal this way but these just seem to seal very well and I will leave a link in the description box in case you're in need and you want to just want to check them out they're not terribly expensive and I apologize guys it's it's laundry day so you're going to hear the laundry running in the background in fact let me shut that door all right that'll be a little bit better sorry about that so what I have here is um, about two pounds of boneless, skinless chicken thighs that I purchased at Aldi. And I don't put raw meat in these bags, but I will tell you, you can actually open them like this and run them through the dishwasher. I try not to put anything in there like um, strongly flavored that would maybe get into the silicone plastic stuff of the bag. So I just, when I purchased this, I just stuck it in the bag. It's not freezer burnt. It thawed beautifully in the refrigerator. I actually thought ahead, don't fame. One of the reasons I wanted to make this is it's very, very tender and it's good over rice, mashed potatoes, um, pasta, noodles, you know, whatever you like your Asian style dishes to have. So it calls for, the original recipe called for six boneless, skinless chicken thighs. And I do have the crock pot liner on. Um, so I'm working through my pantry and I had thought that I used them all, but this recipe, because it has honey in it, is quite sticky and can be a little bit difficult to clean your crock pot. Ask me how I know. So I need to disinfect my countertop. I need to wash my hands really well. And then we'll get to making the sauce that goes on top of this. It is so yummy. I hope you'll stay tuned. And in case you're wondering, I don't use a lot of paper towels just for, you know, like if the cat has a hairball, I'll leave it at that. But I like to disinfect my countertops with the Thieves cleaner and I always have a link in the description box for you to place an order if you would uh, like to try it. It lasts such a long time. You use a little bit and dilute it in water. It's all natural, non-toxic. It makes a great cleaner, but it's really good at killing germs. So anytime I'm handling raw meat, I like to use the Thieves cleaner. So what does this need to put in it? <laughs> Well, the first thing I'm going to put in is one third, yes, I said one third cup of honey. Now, I imagine that you could use, oh, maybe 
uh, like a fruit syrup type thing, but I make it with the honey <laughs> and it is tasty. Oh my word, it's good. Like I ate it just plain without any um, noodles or rice or potatoes and it was even good just plain. Okay, next ingredient, and this is gonna seem a little odd to you, is half a cup of either soy sauce or I like to use the Bragg's uh, liquid aminos. It is from soy protein, but it's a lot lower in sodium if you're watching your salt. I have an intolerance to soy, but I can use the Bragg's without a problem. Uh, go figure. And I don't know if it's because it doesn't have any preservatives, it's not fermented, it's gluten-free, and it actually contains a lot of amino acids, so it's, it's kind of good for you. So let's put in a half a cup, and I know I'm using a dry measure instead of a liquid measure, but I'm only going to wash so many dishes. So we're going to add that. Now, it calls for four cloves of garlic, minced, crushed. So I like buy, and this is just, I think, a great value. Yeah, I just like buying it like this. My homegrown garlic is always long gone. <laughs> it goes pretty fast. I love garlic, and I use a lot of it. I like it in... Um, like if you're grilling veggies, stir fries, it's really good for that. So that was about four cloves of garlic. So if you have a hot date, you might need some mouthwash. And then it calls for a half a cup of ketchup. Now I make my own ketchup and mine is fermented. Let me get another spoon. Um, I do have a video on it. The recipe that I use or the method that I use is from off grid with Doug and Stacy, and I love ketchup and I'm kind of a ketchup snob so I was really uncertain about it and let me tell you I really really like it. I am going to go maybe a scant half cup only because this is relatively high in salt. Tasty though. So let's get that in our sauce here. So you can see this is gonna come together really quickly. Um, I also want to, not today probably, I also want to do um, a video on a new bread recipe. You all, I hate to brag on myself, but I'm going to. It is so delicious. It's diabetic friendly. It is sugar-free if you want to use the Splenda Brown sugar. So it does have a little bit of molasses in it, which, you know, you just have to check with your diabetes care specialist if you're diabetic as to whether or not that can be part of your diet. Um, you could just use straight up like Splenda. You wouldn't, it wouldn't have to be brown sugar, but it is so good. So that I hope will be in this video as well. And let's see, the last thing, and I decided to add this, and it, it really adds a lot of flavor. I love sesame seed oil. You don't need a lot, ask me how I know. If you get too much, um, it repeats <laughs> on you, and it, it can be very overpowering. So I'm actually, I'll use my garlic spoon here. I'm gonna use like a teaspoon. You do not want a lot. That is not was not in the original recipe. Now the original recipe called for um, oregano. I don't think oregano fits with an Asian flavored, but if you wanted to add some onion powder or uh, maybe you don't have fresh garlic, you wanna use uh, granulated garlic or garlic powder, you could do that as well. Um, I'm gonna give this a good stir. Oh, it smells so good. And another spoon. How many spoons does it take to make one recipe? A lot. Y'all, I think you could use a dash more of the 
sesame oil. So maybe like, that might have been like a teaspoon and a half or two teaspoons altogether. And then you simply want to spread this over your chicken and you, I'll give you a little tip. You wanna cook it on low for six hours. You could do high for four, but what I found is sometimes that will make the chicken really tough. Um, you could probably go longer than six hours. And then about 30 minutes before our chicken is ready, I'll bring you back and we are going to thicken up this sauce and we're going to add some white sesame seeds. If I had some green onions or scallions or something, I would put those in there too. I don't have any. I need to go to the grocery. I haven't been to the grocery for a while. Mm. So I'm gonna get this chilling in the crock pot or cooking in the crock pot. <clears throat> and then I'll bring you back when we're ready to thicken the sauce and shred the chicken. And we'll do a taste test and I'll give you my impression. So stay tuned. All right, believe it or not, just a second for you, but it's been about five and a half hours and y'all the house smells amazing so what you want to do now is go ahead and take out your chicken now you will notice from the whether you use soy sauce or liquid aminos it can discolor pieces and parts of the chicken to make it look real dark it tastes absolutely fine and it isn't burnt This will be a nice hearty meal. It is uh, actually, I know so many of us are dealing with lots and lots of rain. It has just poured the rain off and on all day. And now we're under a high wind warning. <laughs> so I'm just gonna shred up this chicken into little pieces, but before I put it back into the crock pot to cook for another 30 minutes, I wanna thicken up this sauce because right now, let's see if I can lift you up. Is just very liquid. So, don't fall over. <laughs> okay, I'm having problems here. The original direction said a tablespoon of cold water with a tablespoon of cornstarch. If you want to use arrowroot powder instead of cornstarch, most cornstarches are GMO. Um, I happen to have cornstarch, so that's what I'm going to use. I'm not sure a tablespoon for that amount of liquid is going to thicken it up so that it's that nice sticky texture. When I made it before, I left out that step, um, and it was delicious even without it being thick, but I want to thicken it up a little bit. So let me shred up the, the chicken, mix up my cornstarch and water. We'll add it to the crock pot. We'll add our meat back. I have my rice. I'm using long grain and wild rice. It was a box. It's a rice a brand. I'm getting through my pantry, y'all. But I'll bring you back in just a second and show you what it looks like once we add the cornstarch. The chicken is beautifully tender. I didn't really even need a knife. You could tear it apart with two forks. One thing I will uh, caution you, if there's a lot of visible fat on your chicken, or you know, like little tags of skin, you may wanna remove that because any fat that was in the chicken thighs, any additional fat is gonna be in your liquid and it, it might be overly fatty. So the trick with using cornstarch or any thickening agent, in my opinion, is you need to mix it really well in a separate bowl and um, using cold water, like cold tap water, it just seems like it won't lump up as bad when you do it that way. So I'm gonna add this and just kind of whisk as I add here. It just doesn't seem like enough to me, but maybe it will be. It's still got another 30 minutes to cook. And that's all there is to it. I'm gonna put the chicken back in, put the lid back on. We'll wait 30 minutes. I'll bring you back for a final taste test. And then part two of this video, which will just be a second for you, I am gonna film on another day and I'm gonna share my bread recipe. Stay tuned. Y'all, I added two tablespoons of cornstarch and two tablespoons of water. One just was not enough and that thickened it up just right. Now I'm going to go ahead and add um, 
maybe two tablespoons of white sesame seeds. You can just kind of do it to taste. I did take a little taste. Mm, good. But you do want to let your chicken continue to cook. I'm actually going to turn it up to high for the last 30 minutes to help that sauce thicken and to cook out any raw cornstarch taste. All right, see you shortly. Well, our sauce thickened up lovely. I've put it on top of the long grain and wild rice. I checked a couple recipes for similar type crock pot chicken, and some of them called for as much as a quarter cup of cornstarch. So I would just say thicken it to the way you want it. I still like it kind of saucy. So let's give it, and there's some like parsley and herbs in the rice and some of the rice being wild rice is dark color. So it is cream and hot, but let's give it a taste. Wow. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mouth still a little sore to chew. Y'all, that was just perfect. Just the perfect amount of the ketchup, which I was a little concerned about. I cut it back just a little bit, but it doesn't, doesn't have a tomato sauce flavor. It's a very Asian flavor. You could add hoisin. You could add, you know, any number of Asian type sauces, you know, mix it up a little bit, but it's so easy and it comes out very tender, very easy to chew. And, you know, with a side of veg, this is gonna make a great dinner for me for today and for the next couple of days. So hang tight, I'm gonna change clothes and it'll be a different day for me, but it'll just be a moment for you and we'll get to making my new favorite bread. As promised, welcome to part two. We are going to be making some old-fashioned raisin bread. So I've shared this book many, many times. Mine's a little worse for the wear, but I've had it for four or five years. And as you see, I have marked a lot of my favorite recipes. I can't say enough good about this book as far as the recipe content, but it does have one downside, y'all. Can you see that the writing here is brown and it's very small? Um, my preference <laughs> would be to have it printed in black, maybe a little bit larger, and it's hard to keep the book open, so it would be nice if it was spiral bound. I think it would be easier to handle. All that said, I will totally buy a new one if um, this one gets so dog-eared I can't use it. <laughs> So my first job, y'all, I worked at a local grocery store to where I grew up called Lafino's. And I worked in the bakery and the snack shop. And one of the things I absolutely loved was when the baker made the cinnamon bread, or I'm sorry, the raisin bread. It was a raisin cinnamon bread, but it was so delicious. And the other day, I kind of got a hankering. I was having a girlfriend over for coffee, and I decided, mm, let me see if I can find just a raisin bread recipe. So I tried this, and I sent most of it home with her, and it was so good. And it's also diabetic friendly from the standpoint you can use an artificial sweetener, and it's not a super sweet bread the sweetness and a lot of the flavor come from the raisins. All right, enough said. So I know not everyone has a bread machine and I know not everyone likes to use a bread machine. You can totally take this recipe, put it in your stand mixer. You're going to have to knead it until it's smooth and elastic. Let it do the two rises. I'm going to say you would bake it at 350, 325, 350 for probably about 40 minutes. So I hope that's helpful for those of you who don't utilize a bread machine. So what we're going to do first is we are going to add our liquid ingredients into the pan. So this calls for one and one eighth cup of buttermilk. I buy the powdered buttermilk from Azure. You can buy it at Walmart. It is a tenth of the cost, 
buying it in bulk from Azure and I just vacuum seal it in a glass jar and it, it lasts. I've never had a spoilage problem. The ratio is a quarter cup of the buttermilk powder to one cup of water. I have done it with milk, but it I love the way this came out and I don't want to change the texture of the bread. So we're going to put that in first. So in a bread machine, you always put your liquids in first in the bottom. Second thing is an egg, beautiful egg. This is um, a Miss Violet egg. <laughs> And I'm getting excited, y'all. I should have my chickens any day now. I mean, I'm hoping. <laughs> so I like to beat the egg up a little bit before I put it in there. The, the Zoshi Rushi is a little bit different machine in that you don't have to use warm water or anything like that because it actually heats up the entire pan prior to mixing. So if you are using a Zoshirushi, beat that egg up first so that it does not um, scramble in spots. Okay, the next ingredient is two tablespoons of oil. Now y'all know that I really enjoy the organic avocado oil from Azure. One thing I can say is I've been seeing, I don't know if y'all have, a lot of research and a lot of publicity, shall we say, about seed oils, um, like rapeseed oil not being good for us. So that is what you find in a lot of highly processed foods and you definitely find it in fast food. Why? Um, they either use a vegetable oil, like a Crisco, which is a soybean oil, or they are using rapeseed. They use rapeseed because it's cheaper. All right, sorry for itching my nose here. So we've got our one and one eighth cup of buttermilk, one egg, and let me get the rest of that egg out. I didn't get that very clean. And our two tablespoons of canola oil. So it calls for two tablespoons of brown sugar next. I do enjoy the Splenda brown sugar. So the ingredients are sugar, molasses, and Splenda artificial sweetener. So it is not sugar free, but I tell you, I, out of all of the products that I have used that are diabetes friendly, um, this has reduced calories. It has reduced amount of sugar if you would just use straight up brown sugar. This tastes the best and seems to have the least impact on how your bread comes out. So, you just wash that down. And you may notice today I'm not dressed like I usually am. Um, we're finally dry here and I'm going to be starting my walking regime again. So I'm very excited about that because I've gotten lazy and out of shape this winter. <laughs> All right, next ingredient is three cups of bread flour. So, y'all, there's no easy way to do this so that my back isn't to you. Anytime that you are going to be measuring a flour, you want to scoop it into the cup, not scoop the cup into the flour. Scooping the cup into the flour compacts the flour and can affect the outcome of your bread product. So today's flours are much different than let's say flours of the 50s and 60s in that they are generally pre-sifted. Now you could use uh, freshly ground grain, but since I used pre store bought, I'll say bread flour, I decided now I'm going to just duplicate that so that it's just like it was last time. Okay, so we have our three cups of flour, and then we need a tablespoon of vital wheat gluten and dust that off a little bit. 
can you make the bread without the vital wheat gluten? You can. The vital wheat gluten helps the bread to develop stronger gluten bonds, and so you can end up with a more consistent product. A little goes a long way. I did purchase that from, I believe, Azure, and it's lasted me a very long time because you use such a small amount. Now we need one and a half teaspoons of salt, which I have a half tablespoon measure, same thing. And I like to put my salt in the corners of the bread pan so that our yeast is not exposed to that salt, which can somewhat deactivate it. Our final ingredient is two teaspoons of SAF yeast or two and a half teaspoons of bread machine yeast. So let me grab the yeast out of the freezer. <clears throat> And what did I say? Two teaspoons? Okay. So easy, y'all, but wait till you see the end product. You're going to be amazed. At, I'll say that and it won't come out. I have had um, some folks who, pardon me, purchased the Zoji Rushi say that they have a lot of difficulty in that the shape of the bread, it'll be higher on one end than the other. What I have found is if you add an additional one to two tablespoons of water, start with one, it, it just comes out better. And I read that on a troubleshooting guide. Now y'all might be like, well, where's the raisins? <laughs> so what we will do is we're going to put it in the bread machine. Uh, I'm just going to use a white cycle medium crust. Um, sorry y'all, the Zoji Rushi will heat the pan, it will mix the ingredients, it will let it do a first rise, and then it's going to beep. When it beeps, we're going to add our one cup of raisins to the pan. And now I can wash up the dishes, that's all there is to it. So I wanted to thank each and every one of you who reached out privately to me, I got some really nice emails. Um, the reason I took a little bit of time off had to do with a little problem with my mouth. I kind of shared it in my part one of this video, but I, I had a long recovery, a lot of swelling, a lot of discomfort, and I just decided not to push myself. So I've taken my break now. Now I'm back at it. Today it's supposed to be in the 70s. Yesterday it was a high of 79, Ohio. <laughs> and I did some weeding in the garden. Um, that was my second round of weeding. I'm not even halfway finished. There's a lot of weeds in the garden, but um, I can pull them and you know start turning the dirt. For a while it was simply too wet to you know, turn the dirt, but I'm hoping to get some, a cabbage and a broccoli plant or two today. A girlfriend and I are going to go to Friendly Knoll Farms down the road <laughs> and kind of take a look and see what they have. It's really too early for flowers, but I usually go several times early season, pre-season and early season to get all of my needs of things that I didn't start here at home. All right, y'all, I will see you in about three hours to show you what the bread looks like before I head out for my walk, and um, we'll give it a taste test as well. It's Perfect good. timing, y'all. Just got back from a 1.8 mile walk, and boy, am I out of shape. So <laughs> my bread beeped, and I was gonna share a couple tips with you if you have issues. Now, one of the things I didn't do is I didn't reshape the bread. Um, so it is going to be a little bit uneven and you don't want to burn yourself, but I do like to get the bread out right away so that it doesn't continue to, oh, I about dropped that, didn't I? So it doesn't continue to cook in the pan and make the crust tough. So how lovely is that, right? It's a little bit ooh, high on one end. 
If you have trouble with your bread um, falling, cool it on its side. And that has worked for me if you have a bread that's kind of finicky and has a tendency to fall. Mm, smells amazing. So we need to let this cool. You never want to cut your bread while it's hot because the moisture in the bread will escape and then you get that dry sort of stale tasting bread all too quickly. So I will bring you back when we're ready to have a slice and I'll let the machine cool and wash up the pan and that'll be it for today's video. Stay tuned, we'll do a little taste test and I wanna show you the texture of the bread. All right, Joe, let's take a little slice here. I'm gonna cut off the shorter end and show you how beautifully this bread cooks up. Let me just show you here, nice and light and fluffy and enough raisins and I don't know that I mentioned that it's one cup of raisins was what the recipe calls for so I know what it tastes like but let me give you a, a quick taste test mm. pardon me y'all it's absolutely delicious the raisins give it a nice sweetness the buttermilk, I think, may be partly why it has such a nice texture. It's moist. It's not a heavy bread. It's pretty light and fluffy. So drop me a comment below after you smash that like button. Is Do you like raisin bread? Is this a recipe that you would consider trying? And what about our honey garlic chicken, which was so delicious? <laughs> That's a definite repeat, too. All right, y'all. I plan to see you on Thursday. I'm going to go eat my bread on my fine china, and then um, I'm heading out around 1030 to the um, nursery. So I'm going to see if I can find some cabbage, some onion sets, just a couple little things that, you know, I didn't seed start here or I don't have here already. All right, y'all. I will see you on Thursday, but until then... Be healthy, be well, be blessed, and take care.